Okay. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Stories of Hope. Today, I'm so excited. I get to talk to my friend, Danielle. And Danielle and I met through a mutual friend, Rob. Was it, that was, that was when we were first in a group together with Rob. Was it the trauma group or we were in something before that maybe was No, we were Rob? actually in Speak and Be Heard. Okay. Oh, Speak and Be Heard. Oh, yes. Yeah. Okay. So we've done a few groups together then. Yeah. Yeah. I guess you're right. Yeah. That was like a year ago or maybe more. I think it, yeah, it was like a little more than a year ago, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, yeah. I remember that. And I remember I, th I remember listening to you and I thought you were really cool. And I remember I was sharing my spinach snack. Yeah, I, <laughs> you got excited about my spinach snack. I know. Did I? Did, I don't know which one of us messaged you that first because I made your spinach snack. Um, yeah. I can remember it was like spinach, a little olive oil, ranch seasoning. I made it that day. Because, yeah, okay. it, you can be heard we were doing something and you gave us the recipe. And it, you, yeah. I was like, I'm making that immediately. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, that's where initially, initially we met. And then you're right. We were on a, a couple other things. I remember um, something else that he had. Then that was life after trauma. Yeah. And then um, you had something with Dubin. Y'all put something on together and I was on yeah, that. Yes. Yeah. And then I've had the pleasure of being in one of your courses, which was yeah. awesome. Yes, you did our summer camp. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, so Danielle and I are friends and colleagues, both in the three principles community. And as we were talking about, we met through our mutual friend, Rob Cook. Um, but maybe I'll pass it over to you. And if you want to share as, you know, maybe even how you, how you came in to be in the three principles or how, you know, how you knew Rob, you don't have to share that or how you knew Rob and then how you came into the, the community. Um, and then we can just get into your story of hope too. Okay. Awesome. So, um, I actually know Rob from being in the military. I was in the Air Force for eight years and he was in the Air Force and we met at both of ours first duty station. So we were both really young. Um, I was 21, he was 19. And um, we knew each other, but we were really close with, um, we had some of the same friends. So I got a chance to know him a little bit, but not a whole lot before I don't know which one of us left first. I think it might've been him maybe, but he wound up going to Turkey. I wound up going to England and then we didn't see each other or speak to, to each other ever again until 2022, I was on Facebook and I saw him and I knew it was him, but he looked so different <laughs> from what I remember in terms of the energy he gave off. So when he was young, um, he gave off a very guarded, angry energy. And the person that I saw on Facebook, they didn't come off like that. They came off very open, came off very warm. And so that piqued my curiosity first, like, wow, like this is the same person, you know? And I know people change over the course of, you know, 20 something years, but I wasn't prepared for something so drastic and to feel that through the computer, through a picture. So on his Facebook page, he kept posting um, letters to Sid, that was an event that was going on um, in the 3PG community. And it was his, I think that was for, was that for his birthday? Okay. I think so. Yeah. So I didn't know who Sidney Banks was. And I was like, okay, well, let me Google him. So I Googled him up, found out he was a Scottish welder. And I was like, this isn't telling me anything. <laughs> Like, why would, they, he, why would he be, you know, um, promoting an event for a Scottish welder? And then I thought, well, maybe he's in school. Maybe this welder was like a philosopher or somebody important and he's learning in college or something. But I still couldn't find anything other than that he was a Scottish welder. So I kind of dropped that at the time. And Rob was a coach and I didn't know it. So when I went on his website... I saw that you can put in your email address and I was like, okay, he's a veteran. I want to support him. I don't mind getting his notices, you know, that kind of thing. And I forgot about it. And one day he sent an email out that talked about his greatest fear. His greatest fear was skydiving. And um, at the end he was like, okay, I told you my greatest fear, what's yours? And so for me, that was when I had um, been sexually assaulted before and I had been in a relationship where there was physical 
abuse. And I don't know what in me <laughs> put it down, but I was like, oh, okay, well, he shared his greatest fear. He said, why don't I share my, okay, so let me just, just put it out there in the email. You know, I haven't spoken to this person in 20 something years, right? And this is the first introduction back to me. So I put it in the email and I just thought like, oh, he's gonna read this and think she is crazy. I am not <laughs> corresponding with her. This is a lot. So he did respond. And what he did say was, wow, that is a lot. You know, that's a lot. But he said, I think that I have something that may help you because I was still explaining that I had triggers and um, although it happened so long ago, things would happen where I would watch a movie, read an article, it could be anything at any time and I would be triggered and it would just be really bad. So my first thought was, how can he help me? He's a man. What does he know about me, a female, <laughs> being sexually assaulted? So it was wrong to think that, but that was what I thought. And I knew that he had PTSD. So we were both diagnosed with PTSD, but for different reasons. And um, I saw he had a podcast. So I said, well, you know, he's a veteran. I still want to support him. <laughs> so I started listening to the podcast. So I listened to the first episode and I was like, oh, okay, this is interesting. Then the second, and then the third, and then before I knew it, I was in love with the people that I was listening to. Didn't know them, they were strangers, but I just connected with their stories. I connected with their lives. I connected with their authenticity and how transparent they were. Like, wow, there are people really sharing some, some stuff in their lives openly. Like real people. This isn't pretend. This isn't, well, I'm only going to tell you so much or I don't go through anything, you know, hard in my life either. But I wasn't used to um, being exposed to something where the people went so deep. That was one thing. The other thing I loved when I was listening to it was that everybody was just like an overcomer and so resilient. Like, they go through these horrible things in their lives, some of them, and they were like still happy. They were still, you know, just radiating that positive energy. And it made me curious again. I was like, what are these people doing? Like, how are they going through these things? And they sound so happy. Like, or they sound so calm, so strong. And I remember that's what initially got me to wanting to be coached by him. You know, we got on a call, we talked, and that's what really did it for me. Um, he didn't give me things to read until later, but, and I didn't know who Michael Neal was. I knew that was his mentor, but I didn't know who that was either. So all I had to go on was what I felt from the conversation and how, okay, this person clearly isn't the same. And he's gone from having PTSD and obviously dealing with some major trauma in his life to now being this resilient, just sparkling person full of love. <laughs> and I, I was trying to figure out like, where's the, where's the middle? Like, how did, how did this happen? So I would say the conversation with him and um, the podcast and hearing all the people. So Rob was one way that I came in, yeah. but really what drew me in at its core were the people. Mm. I love that. You know, um, Sari Taylor was the person who introduced me to the principles and it was Sari's story. But as you said, it's you know, for me being in the community, I used to have a lot of health anxiety, but being here, I heard positive story after positive story of people with cancer, people whose partners died, people with this and this strokes. And I was like, it was, they were so resilient that, so you know, all of that just fell away from me. Um, it's, I, I yeah, to your, it's the resiliency of the human spirit, I think, and how people share, um, yeah, you're so right. Um, and so then you started 
Um, you know what I know for me, when I was listening and learning about the principles, I had insights that changed my experience. You know, that I, I heard people talk about being a human in a, in a way that I hadn't heard. Um, so for me, my, um, how I came in was because I was so impacted by anxiety, you know, specifically driving anxiety and panic attacks. Um, and I know for me, um, I had insights that started to change my life. Did you have insights that are, you know, um, what piqued your interest was, or the connection was, was your PTSD, was your experience? What's that like now? And I guess I'm curious of like, what, what are some insights if you had them that started to change it doesn't have to be necessarily on trauma, but that started to, you started, it, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but I'm, th I know I'm imagining you had some insight that you started to see things in a different way that maybe you hadn't before. Is that true? Oh yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> definitely. So, um, my very first one, I remember I was at the beach with some friends that were visiting in town and I actually was listening to the podcast <laughs> Um, and after I finished and I was looking at the water, I remember I was looking at the water and I was just watching the currents and I just felt really calm in that moment. And I was thinking to myself, why aren't we moving through life like that? Why are not we moving through life like the current? Why aren't we just going in and out, you know, the ups and downs, just flowing with the current versus us as humans, we just push against it, push against it, fight against it, um, which makes life a lot harder. So that was the very first one I had. And, you know, it, it, it definitely put things in perspective for me. Um, and there's been others. I know you and I have talked about um, stillness a little bit in nature, but there was another moment where everything just kind of fell away and I just felt really connected to nature. And I didn't, I didn't grow up connected to nature. I was someone who, um, I like to escape through books. So I grew up being kind of a bookworm, always reading a book, trying to put my head in a book. And I didn't really like going outside. I'd do it if my parents made me, but I didn't like it. And it was just this new way of me seeing nature and how I was connected to it. Um, and it, it has, it's been that way since, like, I, I've been able to understand that it helps to keep me centered. Um, it helps to get me to a, as I say, a quiet mind. <laughs> um, and I don't think that if I didn't go through my journey and, um, wasn't exposed to the principles, I don't think it would have happened like that. Maybe it still would have, I don't know. But I think that being exposed to the principles and having, starting to have those insights and really starting to be aware of what I'm feeling, um, whether it be my body or being aware of what I'm thinking, um, I think that that's really helped me connect to nature in such a way where I've been able to get a lot of insight from that as well. Yeah, yeah. I love that. There is... Dick and Bender talks a lot about nature, you know, and I think it's, I see um, like the universal intelligence in nature, you know, it's, it's like, oh, yeah. it helps me, um, you know, sometimes I just, you can't help but be in awe of, of that when you see all the different types of plants or that there's like birds, I mean, birds and bees and zebras, I'm like, um, I don't even know how to describe it, but as you said, also the flow of rivers and currents and waves and. Yeah. Yeah. And even what, what you were just saying with the animals, like birds and bees and everything else, if we pay attention to them, they kind of still move through life like that. Yeah. You know, they get up in their day and okay, they're looking for some food or they're, they're, they're really a good example of being in that present moment, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And 
I think up until now in my life, I wasn't really focused on the present moment. Mm -hmm. I was either um, worrying about the future or for me, it was a real struggle with my past. You know, I would get those triggers and be back in my past, reliving my past. Or um, if I hadn't done this, if I hadn't said that, maybe if I had done this and just constantly replaying yeah. my past, which, you know, was keeping me in that um, traumatic state, I'd say. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, um, George Pransky, he had, in one of his videos, he said, our memory is the, like, it's like the biggest component to having emotional distress. Like if it wasn't for our memory. And he said, there's actually research. There was a man who had no long-term or short-term memory. So they studied him and they gave him a journal. And so every day he would do a journal entry and every day he's like, it's the most beautiful day. I'm so happy to be alive. I love life, you know? Um, and yeah. it's like, but when we understand memory, which I think having an understanding of the principles, we can understand, oh, it's, we're just, it's our thinking in the moment. And there's a way to, I think, make peace with the past. You know, it's not that we have to deny, you know, traumatic things that have happened to us. Um, but I'm curious if you're open to sharing about it, about um, what, what started to shift in, in as far as, um, I guess a few things that I'm curious about, what are you, talk to me about how you view triggers now. Um, and then I'm also curious about all the past and the present, because I see it so much where, and also I'm not saying I'm a hundred percent perfect on it because a lot of it is, is the future, but with so many of my clients, it's like they get lost in the past or the, like everything could be okay in this moment. But they remember, well, it was really bad before. What if it gets that bad again? Um, and so they kind of mingle the past and the present, uh, the past and the future um, too. Yeah. But I know that's two things, but I guess whichever one you want to start off with. Um, um, okay, I'll start off with the triggers first. Okay. So now um, it took some time, but... I'm in a place now where, and it's funny because for a while I thought that once I came into the principles and I was learning and everything and really getting grounded, I was like, oh, nothing's going to trigger me now. I'm great. <laughs> mm -hmm. So when it happened again, because, you know, we're human, um, what was different is I, I started to allow myself to feel. I started to allow myself to feel my feelings before I was always resisting feeling bad, I guess, you know, if you want to use that term, yeah, yeah. Um, f those negative feelings um, when they came into play from the past or, you know, any negative feelings, I would suppress. I had went through so much of my life suppressing negative feelings um, and thinking that I wasn't allowed to feel angry, you know, oh, I, I need to be in this positive place all the time. I need to um, be there for other people. So I don't need to be negative or feel these bad feelings. I need to be in a good place. And that was unrealistic. So I finally saw that it was okay to feel these feelings. And once I started feeling these feelings at first, it was hard because I wasn't used to feeling them. And it was kind of scary a little bit until I sat with it and knew, oh, okay, you're okay. Just because you feel these feelings doesn't mean you're not okay, you are okay. And then I was able to let them, I guess you'd say pass through or let them go. So instead of the, the bad feelings coming and I'm like, oh, no, no bad feelings, no, no. Or not catching it and the bad feeling hitting me and I'm like, oh my gosh, I gotta get this bad feeling off of me. I gotta get it off of me. I can't, I can't feel it, I can't feel it. Um, now it's more of kind of a noticing, I guess you'd say like, oh, okay. Like, you know, I'm not happy about that or, you know, that's kind of scary or I, if something triggers me going back to that sexual assault, I'm able now to, it's, it's not that I don't still feel bad about it or, um, 
sometimes it does bring me some sadness, but I'm quickly able to remember, okay, but you're okay. You know, that, that happened a long time ago. So it's not really forgetting it, but it's more of when something is triggering it and it comes up, um, it's like, oh, okay, you know, yeah. it's all right. And kind of let it flow. <laughs> like we talked about with the current, just kind of <laughs> ride it out, you know? And in the beginning, riding it out hurt because I didn't understand how my body and mind is really connected. Mm -hmm. And there were times where I would start getting depressed again, or I would have that panic attack or whatever it was. And it, it was, and then that would make, make me even more upset. And then I'd start panicking more because now I'm feeling this and what is this? And, you know, but now I'm in a place where I know it's okay. Like, okay, it's okay. And it's better for me to um, ride the current and let it go through versus me trying to fight against it and um, be in a lot of physical pain or in a hypervigilant state. So, yeah. 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 Thank you. Now, I don't know what the other question was again. You oh, asked well, we, me, so well, we can get to it, but I think, you know, because I think um, understanding where our experience is coming from is so helpful because I think sometimes when people talk about triggers, I feel like it's in a disempowering way, you know, where they're, yeah, they're hypervigilant or they're like, no, this triggers me and this triggers me when sometimes we can't help it. You know, there's a memory comes to mind or a scent or a song or whatever. And, and it, um, but understanding our experience, you know, where it's coming from can help us just as you were saying, like not fear our experience, you know, and I spent a lot of time too, not wanting to have any sort of uncomfortable or bad feeling, you know, and then I think that's so more exhausting if we're hypervigilant. Cause it's like, no, I don't want to feel that rather than, Gosh. cause then we're thinking about it, trying to prevent it rather than, um, Oh, I can just feel this. And it's sure at first it's, it's sometimes it takes a little bit getting used to, but that it passes. And, um, it was so much more exhausting for me to try to like avoid triggers too. Oh, and then, gosh. Yes. Like, I just had so much more thinking. Cause also then I would think for me, it made me feel broken compared to other people. Like, well, this is okay for other people, but I have to watch out for this and certain things um, rather than knowing that, knowing how my thoughts contribute, but that's okay. I can get onto myself and see it, you know, and, and see that sometimes like a memory, you know, I didn't, I had a one sexual assault that was very mild in the scheme of things. Um, but I hadn't, um, you know, my daughter was having a sleepover with her best friend. The parents were going to be out of town. They're very responsible people, girls. And so this was a year ago. And I had said, oh yeah, that's fine. You know, like, and then I, the, her friend has a twin brother. And so I was saying, um, oh, he might, if he has a friend over just, you know, I was like, make sure you always lock the doors and certain things. And I was telling my girlfriend this later. And she was like, what are you talking? Cause I said, you know, just, I never want my daughter to be overly, cautious I, or like I don't want her to be fearful but I want her to be smart and so it was just a, a conversation about certain things and and I think my friend's like where's this coming from or something and I said and then I hadn't I had remembered where something had happened to me and not to make this about me but it was like I hadn't thought about it in 20 years and it was it wasn't not to minimize anything but like I'm okay with it it was okay but it had come to my memory and then I was like, oh, this thing happened to me and I never said anything and this is horrible. Um, and it was like, it was in my memory for a bit. Um, yeah. And I remember thinking, not for TMI, but whatever, I'm going to go there of thinking, oh, is this going to mess you up now with sex with your boyfriend? Like now you remembered this. Um, and it was like, I felt sad for me, old me, but I also felt like okay about it too. But it was like, should I be more horrified? Like, it was like so interesting to observe it. And I remember then, as we were maybe going to have sex that night of thinking I could really get in my head about this. And, um, and that would be fine. It would be fine if I really got in my head, 
you know, and I know that we've talked and we don't have to go into any of that, but like, I have all these stories about sex and sexual trauma and the, how it impacted my last relationship. And so sometimes these thoughts would come of, and I know that what I've experienced is, is mild compared to, to some, um, but it was almost like, I don't know. It's just so interesting to think of all the swirling thoughts of like, could you leave it alone? And, um, and I just actually just let myself feel it. And I just let it ebb and flow, but it was like, um, what's the point of why I'm sharing this? Um, I think I hadn't thought about that in a while. I don't know if I'd really thought about it since being in the three principles conversation. And so it didn't at all feel like I was denying what happened to me or, um, but I, I also didn't feel like I got lost and dragged into it. Um, which I think, um, sometimes, and I don't know how to say it the right way. Like I would use it to then feel like shut down, um, and feel sad. And, um, and it was like, it felt like, Oh, that memory had popped into my mind. And it was like, part of me is like, oh, wait, can you even have sex now that you have this memory on your mind? Like, and it was like, yeah, I can. I don't know. It was like, it was a different experience of remembering it and letting it ebb and flow. But also I was like, I don't put in put pressure on myself either. I was like, in a way, like, I was like, you can just be present. Like, it was like, that's actually really what it was, was like, yeah. you don't have to think about it. You can just be in this moment and the next moment and the next moment. Um, I think before I get really in my head thinking about um, past things like that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And I'm happy that I'm in a place where that's that's where it is for me. Like you just described it. Like I never even really talked about it until I was in the community. And I, I was in a space that was safe um, where I was able to really share. And um, this was in Rohini Ross's and Angus Ross's space. Um, they put, they had something together that summer that I was a part of and I, sh I shared it. And, you know, there's strangers in there. I didn't know everybody. So that, that really shocked me that I was able to do that. And then once I started talking about it and, um, even today, you know, and it's funny cause Rob even said something recently and I was on something of his and he was like, yeah, he was like, I was just looking at you. You were just sitting there talking and you're like, yeah, you know, and when I, I was sexually assaulted and this, and he said, and you're just talking. I was thinking to myself, wow, I remember when she couldn't even, you know, open up her mouth to really, and, and yeah, it was like that. It's just, just the fear, the shame, the guilt being attached to it that made it so heavy where um no i didn't think it was something that i could ever talk about or even accept and when i say accept i don't mean um i'm not acknowledging that sexual assault is bad because it was a horrible thing you know no one wants to go through that but accept in terms of okay this happened this was a part of my life um Yes, it sucked. I went through some dark periods, but this is me now. <laughs> this is also what I'm looking forward to in life. Like it, it, there's no me kind of going down that depressive spiral anymore. Yeah. And anytime some, somebody, not somebody, but anytime something triggers me now, instead of taking that and going into that dark depressive spiral, it's more of what you said, more kind of noticing and okay, you know, and let me feel all the feels that come with it and and just ride it out from there. Yeah. 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 Um, there are so many things that were coming to my mind, but that's good. I was just, then I was listening and I just let them go by. Um, oh, you know what? Rob said something when we were in this life after trauma course and he said, our trauma, you know, our, our past experiences can be as big as we want them, but then we have to carry mm -hmm. it, you know, and that really, um, 
because I he said, said it so neutrally. It wasn't like, oh, it wasn't. It was just like, we can make it. It can be as big, but then we're going to have to carry it. Um, right. That was when he was talking about all that rucksack stuff, too. Uh, like, why would you want to carry all that in your rucksack and just carry it around, carry it around and carry it around? And it's so heavy when you can just pull the cord and release it. Yeah. 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 But also sometimes for me, it's like when I thought of that thing, I was like, well, I can carry it around a tiny bit. Like it, I can carry around a little rock for the day if I want. Like it was like, I can do whatever I want. You know, and that's what I love also about the principal's conversation. There's no shoulds. No one's like, you should forget about this or you should move on. It's like, we're free. We're free thinkers. We're free to make it as big as we want. We We get to do, you know, to me, it really is like letting our feelings be our guide. And it feels so much better to ultimately feel because then when we know it's an experience, it's temporary. Like all experiences is meant to flow like the current. And I love, I know this was a little bit ago, how you said, cause it was so honest when I came into the principles, I thought, okay, I'm never going to be triggered. And then we're human. Like, I think for me, I was right. like, okay, I'm going to get really great at this and I'm never going to be anxious again. Um, I'm never going to have a low mood. Mm -hmm. um, and that took me a while to adjust that I was still going to be human. But I think getting over myself and learning because each time I'm, human. I mean, which I'm always human, but each time I get caught up, um, yeah. I feel anxious or get in a low mood or whatever. I learn something. I feel like my experience goes deeper because I'm like, Oh, got caught up again, <laughs> you know? Um, and I get more <laughs> okay with it, but I used to think I was doing it wrong. You know, I used to think, um, until I really heard all my mentors and people I woke up to like, oh yeah, this happened to me, you know, cause I would think, oh, Dr. Petty doesn't get a cut up, got cut up and dick in. And if I was doing it right. Right. That's what I thought too. I would be like, oh, they oh, don't my get God. caught up. I look, I need to, I need to do whatever I need to do to get to that level because they don't get caught. Up. Right. I thought the same thing. I know. So what, if you're listening, <laughs> you're still going to be human, but you know, you're still going to be human, but then we get to see more where our experience comes. And I know I get over things a lot faster now, like okay. so much faster. Um, it doesn't go as deep. My either anxiety or low mood doesn't go as deep and it doesn't go as long, you know? And it's like, and I think I'm, I think I leave myself alone a lot more. Like I have my experience, even though my brain still sometimes thinks, what'd you do? And maybe you can avoid that next time. Like it still chatters, at least for me. It's still always like, Let's think about it so you don't make that mistake again. But not it's not as doesn't pull me down. Like it's, you know, it's it's like I can do it in a lighter way, I think, more of the time. Oh yeah. And I love that. I love that you said that. You can do it in a lighter way. And like I'm the same way. I feel like that's what grace is. That's what giving yourself grace is, you know? Whereas before, I couldn't give myself grace. You know, it it I, there was no lightness with it where now you're right. It's like, oh, okay, well, being a human again, oh, I'm getting caught up, you know, and I noticed the same thing that it does go by a lot quicker where before it may take me days, weeks, depending on what it was, where now, you know, maybe it takes me hours. Um, if it's not that big, maybe it takes me minutes, you know, it's, yeah, it's it's been great to um really understand that I'm not my thoughts like I heard that before mm -hmm. but I didn't really understand it where now I understand it it's like mm -hmm. okay well thoughts like a bird okay you can let it go you can let it fly away you know so yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. and I know you just said a little bit about that that I'm not my thoughts what that means to you you know that thoughts are like birds and you can let them go away will you talk a little bit more about what that means to you that you're not your thoughts? Yeah, yeah. Um, for me, before it, it it felt like whatever I thought it it always meant something. Like this has to mean something. Oh, I'm feeling so bad. I'm so sad. Um, when you know things got really bad, and I. I at the time I had wanted to commit suicide, I, I, that to me, um, it meant that I didn't want to be here anymore. 
Mm. You know, it meant that I didn't see life worth living, which that's not what it meant for me. Later, I was able to see that what it really meant for me was, no, I'm in some serious pain. I'm in some serious pain and I don't know how to help myself. Mm. Um, for me, it's a relief not understanding, well, now understanding that, you know, I'm not my thoughts, whether it's a, and you know, I hate saying this, but whether it's a good thought or bad thought, you know, um, in the end, um, I know I'm more than just this body, you know, I'm connected straight to source. Um, we're all here for a reason for me. And this is my outlook. Um, we were all made differently. Um, and you know, that means there's over 7 billion different thoughts going on 24 <laughs> seven. That's a lot of thinking. <laughs> so um, it's great for me to know that my thoughts, that's not who I am for me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, when you're talking about feeling those feelings and um, being guided through life, by some of the things that I feel. And that's not to say that thought is a bad thing. Thought is a wonderful thing. Mm -hmm. I love that we have thoughts. Um, you know, thoughts have created everything around us. So, you know, without thought, there, there wouldn't be a lot here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, thought is a gift, you know, yeah. as we, like, I, com I, I also completely agree. Until I came into the principles, I really thought if I had a thought, I thought there was some truth to it, you know, and I thought if I felt it strongly, that was like, yes, this bad thing is going to happen. And your thought is true. Like I thought my, when my stomach would hurt or my heart would ache, it was like agreement to the thoughts, you know, it was like, I had, which sounds so different, like, or unbelievable. But for most of my life, I thought if I felt something strongly, that meant my thinking was right. Like I was like, you know, I really thought, but now I know I was just feeling my thinking. Um, yeah. You've mentioned a, a bit before, a little bit about depression and then some suicidal ideation. If you're open to talking about what are some insights or what's your experience like now with, if you experience low mood or depression or, um, or how does, how has being in the three principles conversation changed change that experience for you um it's changed a lot in the sense that that hopelessness isn't there like one of the reasons i was so attractive attracted to doing this with you was because of what you called it <laughs> and that was a time period in my life where I didn't have a lot of hope, but I was pretending. I felt like I was pretending because that's what the world wanted me to do. You know, I had to seem like I was okay, that, that you know, life moves forward. Okay, I've gone and gotten these degrees. Okay, I've gone and had these kids. I've been married, you know, got married. Okay, I've gone into the military, all these things. But at my core, I was not okay still because I still hadn't dealt with any of it. I just kind of pushed it to the side and okay, you know, got to keep moving on and keep living. Um, now, when I feel myself getting sad, I don't fight it. I think the biggest thing for me when I was really in that, I, I call it dark hole, um, was that I wouldn't allow myself to feel sad. And if I did feel sad, I'd punish myself for it. Like, you know, look at everybody else. They're doing great. They're doing fine. You're not supposed to be feeling sad or um, once again, putting all this meaning on my thoughts. Okay. I feel sad and I'm thinking, okay, that must mean that I'm, I'm not grateful for my life or, you know, I need to think about the things that I'm happy about in my life because I'm not supposed to feel sad. I shouldn't feel sad because, um, some people didn't make it, you know, um, you made it. And where I am now, when I, when I feel sad, sometimes if I'm sad, I may burst into tears. And there's been times I've bursted into tears, Lily, and had no clue. Like, 
what? And I'm perplexed, right? It's that perplexed thing, like, why am I crying? Like, what is, I, you know, why am I bursting out crying? Like, nothing's happened. Why am I? But our body tells us a lot. And sometimes there's stuff that we've been pushing down so long. Um, I've noticed since I've come into the principles, like I have years of stuff that's just coming up sometimes out of nowhere. So if I burst out in a tear and I'm crying, you know, it's okay. Cry, Danielle. And once it's over, typically I feel better, actually. <laughs> so um, that's where I am. And if I do seem to get stuck a little bit in that hole of depression. Going back to what we talked about earlier, I just give myself some grace, you know? Um, there might be days where I am feeling sad and I don't wanna do anything. I just wanna get in the bed, pull the covers over my head, you know, get warm and cozy and sleep or just be in the bed and lay there. I don't want anyone messing with me. I'm just in a low mood. But now I realize, okay, that's okay if you feel like that. And you can get in the bed, get in the bed and be in your low mood and be with the covers, whatever you want to do. Like, don't judge yourself for how you feel in this moment. And if your body is in this moment needing to cry, needing to release, then, you know, let it cry. It's okay. It, admit that it needed to happen. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just now coming into a place where I'm understanding that the, our, our body and our thoughts are really related oh, yeah. <laughs> in a big way <laughs> yeah. because I always thought it was so separate for mm -hmm. the longest. Like I can control, you know, if I'm feeling sad, I can control that with my thoughts, which I can, but I never knew how connected it was. Like if I felt something in my body, like we said before, depression, anxiety, whatever, um, that meant something or, um, you know, in my thoughts, I was thinking, oh no, you can't think about that. Can't think about that because that's making you feel bad. So, um, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Well, it's so interesting because I actually, I did experience depression 20 something years ago, but most of my experience has been around anxiety, but there's, so many similarities, you know, to what you your you were saying with anxiety, you know, where it's, I shouldn't be feeling this way. Nobody else feels like all these thoughts of resisting, I, you, you know, that keep it around longer, like that um, artificially prolong, whether it's anxiety or depression, where, yes, yeah, some people might be more prone to a low mood. Some people might be more prone to anxiety, but they, they can all be oh, like, okay. And short lived, like when we are, we're not resisting it. We're not adding on to it, you know, then we just allow it. And it's like, yeah, cause maybe I experience anxiety more than some people, but like, but for the many of days, most days I feel really great. I'm in the yeah. present. I'm pretty flowy. Like I'm, you know, and then sometimes now it's not so much anxiety, but sometimes I'll get insecure about something. Like if it's about sometimes something comes and it's like something happened, like it happened, I got insecure about something in my relationship, but I was so aware of it, but I just, I knew what it was. And before I didn't have as much awareness, but I, I couldn't control that. I felt this way, but I knew yeah. enough to say, I'm not going to talk about this, but he was like, babe, what's wrong? Like, you know, and I was like, I've created a story in my head and I feel it. <laughs> like I knew I felt it. Like I like broke my own heart a little bit. And it was like, and I just said, and I just like, just, it was, you know, I just took care of myself before I wouldn't have had that awareness and I would have, um, but I also, yeah, I give myself grace. Like I've come so far, I think in the relationship shit that I sometimes still get caught up in, like, um, and yeah, I, I just loved everything that you shared because it's so it's, what you talked about, it's applicable for if someone's experiencing depression, but if someone's experiencing anxiety, you know, and, and all of this, it's like, and I'm not saying that someone has to follow that formula, but it's like this simple premise of when we allow ourselves to have the experience, give ourselves grace, we're guided to take care of ourselves, like beyond our thinking, you know? Um, yeah. And when we don't resist it, to me, it, we accept where we're at, um, 
it flows so much faster and with much more ease, you know, and then I think I feel empowered, like, oh, I can tolerate that, you know? Um, and I've heard yeah. from clients too, like when they finally realize, cause sometimes they know it intellectually, okay, I can let it be, but they still try to control it until sometimes they don't. And they're like, oh, and, and it sounds so simple, but they'll say, I could let myself experience it, know it knowing it will pass. Um, and, and they're like, wow, it did. It passed. I didn't have to do anything, you know, like, yeah. but I, I love that you're like, I can get cozy in bed. I'm in bed all the time. Like I'm such a homebody and I'm such a bed person. Um, but I used to think, why can't I work as much as so-and-so, or why can't I do this? And I would like add on mm -hmm. to it. Um, yeah, just, and I love that you're like, I shouldn't feel this way, you know, and that would really, I think with a lot of people experiencing anxiety, they also feel hopeless. So I'm so happy you brought that up because um, I think especially when we're like trying so hard, because um, I know a lot of people um, that come in to work with me, everything they've done has been so well-intentioned, you know, whether it's yeah. they've been changing their diet and trying to focus on sleep or like, cause I felt like you were talking about like trying to think positively and being grateful, like mm -hmm. all these things that might occur to us now, like we might fall into a feeling of gratitude or fall like, you know, but it, it's much more easy and it's more effortless. Um, and I think it can feel really hopeless. Um, when you feel like something's wrong with us and we shouldn't feel this way. You know, I have a lot of clients who either feel depressed or they feel anxious and they think I shouldn't feel this way. When we, you know, you said, well, sometimes it's like, well, I'm crying. You know, we just say, I can feel however I'm going to feel. I can take care of myself in this moment. Um, like there's no shoulds I can feel anyway, you know, um, it just makes it flow so much faster. It's so, there's so much hope. So I'm just so happy that you, we're talking about this. Oh yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you for allowing me to come and talk. And um, I think you really hit the key on, you know, you really, you hit, really hit the nail on the head. You really did it when you said allowing. Um, that's been one of the biggest things to help me is just allowing and getting out of supposed to be oh it's supposed to be like this i'm supposed to feel this and it's supposed to go like that um letting that go and just allowing have been the two biggest things yeah. um by far to help me yeah yeah what what helped me allow what helps me allow is the understanding is understanding about the human experience you know like regaining that trust and how resilient we all are you know, like, wait, I, I can hear these stories and I'm a human too. This is possible for me, you know, that it's like, we're all unique, but our experience isn't, <laughs> you know, cause it's like, oh, all humans, all humans are every, you know, the world is designed beautifully, like fish yeah. and rivers and birds and, and humans. And, and to me, it's like, oh, I can allow myself to be this, be a human. Yeah. And understanding that that's what we were designed to be. So there's going to be times where we overthink. There's going to be times where we're triggered. There's going to be times where we're in a low mood, but it's all allowed and it's all okay. We're human, like you said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And he, Sid Banks said, if the only thing people learned was not to fear their experience, that alone would change the world. Um, <laughs> yes, it would. <laughs> um. And he also said, I think something like life is a contact sport. You're going to get your knocks, but it's not the knocks that count. It's how you handle them. Um, yeah, you know, and I, I think like that. that. Yeah. Um, because I know that, you know, being in the three principles conversation, it's not like, okay, well now you're here and you're never going to have a human experience. You're never going to have a knock. You're never, but it is like, we get to allow it and give ourselves grace. Um, and I know when I do that, I don't get caught up in my like thinking. It's like, I, uh, that's when I allow myself more to be guided, um, yeah. and take care of myself in, 
in what occurs at that moment, you know, whether I'm on a plane, I'm in the middle seat on a plane, or I'm in a car, or I'm at home, and I get to be cozy in bed, you know, it's like, that's why it's like, we have our own toolbox in here. That's, that's perfect when we don't, you know, or we get to, I love that you said, I don't know if it was before we started recording that, like, you love nature, and you're a tree hugger, you know, or it might occur to you, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to go outside in nature, you know, but there's, we don't have to think about it ahead of time. Right. Yeah. And it's funny because that's something that I would have never, ever <laughs> done before I had my experience with nature. I just, I would have never done that. I mean, I would have respected people who did like, oh, okay, well, that's their thing. They l love trees and they hug trees. That's cool. No, that's not for me. I'm not going to be going around hugging trees. Whereas now, yeah, I have my trees, talk to my trees. My trees are named in my yard. Yeah, because it's... Um, it's like I'm a part of them, you know, it's like I'm, I'm able to be aware of that. Because if you think about it, we need them to breathe and they need us to thrive. You know, they need our carbon dioxide. We need their oxygen, you know. Um, and even if you look at the similarities with people and how we're designed and you look at trees, they look at trees and their roots and how they branch off everywhere. Look at our circulatory system. Yeah. You know, yeah. Um, our bronchial system, you know, it, there's a I, lot of similarities. <laughs> I know. Well, and you have, you see, you know, the trees that grow on like a side of a mountain, like their roots are so deep and so strong because yeah. they've had to hold on, you know, rather than if it's just a tree in the front yard of a super flat place, their roots aren't going to be as deep. Absolutely. Also, and then um, with the flat roots or whatever. <laughs> yeah. And then um, I looked at the fact that, okay, they need sunlight to live and thrive. We need sunlight to live and thrive. And then once I found out that their roots is like a interconnected system of how they, you know, help other trees, which was really interesting when I read about it. And I was like, oh, it's kind of like this tree network of they can sense when the other trees need something and then they're sending their nutrients. And it was just really cool. Um, for me to discover, you know, so many things and similarities. And um, then I started learning about food and like, oh, well, plants really help us and we need plants. I mean, I'm mean, drinking them right now. So I know I saw your green drink. It looks good. <laughs> yeah. Um, what is it? Celery, kale, cucumber and green apples. Mm -hmm. But make it um, on your own. What did you say now, Lily? You make it. Do you have a juicer? Yeah. And I just started doing that. So many moons, my brother used to juice. And I remember, you know, how he looked and the energy that came off of him. And I was just, he just looked so healthy. You know, it's really when he was really focused on himself. And I always wanted to juice, but it would always come to my mind. But I'd be like, oh, okay, yeah, one day, one day, one day. Because I was a big smoothie person, mm -hmm. you know, put everything in the smoothie and drink my smoothie, which I still do. But um, my son, uh, my youngest has autism and it's hard to get a lot of good fruit and vegetables into him because of textures and tastes. And, and so I was reading and I was like, I discovered with juicing, you can get a lot of those nutrients into someone if they're not eating a lot of fruits and vegetables, even better in some ways. Yeah. So I was like, you know what, let me buy a juicer and let me start doing that. And if I can juice for myself, but then include him like, oh yeah, well just taste this and try it and see what you think. My mom needs help because, and he does, he's, he's a little critic. <laughs> so I've made juices where he's like, no, that is not it. You know? And cause I always let him do, well, what do you want to try? And so for some of the pictures, it looks really appealing. Mm -hmm. Like one of them was um, really that bright red and it was a bell pepper recipe so like bell pepper and um yeah some other things in there so i i did it and i was like well are you sure you want to try this he was like yeah that looks really good so then i gave him a little shot of it and he was like no 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 bell peppers <laughs> so uh, but uh, i've kind of given him control over that of what he likes yeah so now i can get him to drink all different types of fruits and vegetable mixes where before trying to get him to eat it 
was not going to happen. So, yeah. 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 Oh my God. I love that. Well, and maybe, and I know that I don't want to keep you for too long. I want to respect your time, but I'm curious if you, maybe as we're wrapping things up, has mm-hmm. being in this conversation changed your parenting? And then I also would love you to talk to people about your podcast. Um, and, but before we go there, first we'll do, cause I've noticed it had a big impact on my parenting, um, and my relationships with my kids. Has it with you? Oh gosh. Yes. <laughs> when I was being coached by Rob, um, my youngest was one of the first ones to feel the difference in me. So we were in the car one day and he was like, mom, you are so unstressed. And I knew what he meant by that, but I was surprised. And I was like, what are you talking about? I'm like, okay. And he was like, I don't know. You're just so calm. You're like eerily calm. And I was surprised because one, he never told me that before. And two, you know how we do. Then it got me curious. <laughs> like, okay, well, why does he think I'm so calm right now? And then it got me curious too. Like, well, am I not normally really calm? Like, how do I normally calm off? So I started with those questions. And later on, I realized, oh, he doesn't know of the principles, but he's feeling the principles. It's that feeling that Sid Banks is talking about that's drawing him in and he can't explain it, but he just feels it from me. So that was one big way that it affected me. The fact that he was aware and I was like, wow, okay. I can, even though he may not understand if I'm trying to have a conversation with him, like, oh, these are the three principles and this is, you know, but he's aware of my feelings though. And my feelings are affecting his feelings. So that got me thinking a little differently in terms of my parenting. So, um, or and have as many open conversations with him. It's like, I'm the parent, this is how it goes. Where I don't do that. Now I, I sit and I talk to him more, you know, or if he's trying to make a decision cause he, he gets really anxious with making decisions wanting to make the right decision, which decision, tell me what to do. And before I would just do that, but that wasn't really helping him. I I see, I saw over time. So what I started doing was, okay, well, let's, let's sit with what you're trying to decide. Okay. So let's say if you pick this, well, I'm not saying I pick, okay, we're not saying you're picking that, but let's say you pick it. How's that make you feel? And you tell me, oh, well, you know, I'd be happy and, you know, whatever else he said. Or I'd be like, okay, well, what if you pick the other one though? All right, tell me how that makes you feel. <laughs> and then he might say, well, I mean, I guess I'm okay, but when I think about the other option, it makes me feel happier or whatever it is. And then I would just tell him, well, that's your answer. You know, so um, I've been saying that a lot to him. Well, how does it make you feel? Or what does your heart say? He's probably sick of that one. Well, what is your heart telling you? <laughs> but um, it's definitely helped. And when he has those teenage moments, because he's going to have them, he's 16. I sit with what I'm feeling more, you know, instead of going into, you know, mad mom mode, like, oh, how could, you know, are you being disrespectful? me like what it's just okay you know i'm taking moments to think for a moment and just settle with what i'm feeling all right he's getting you really upset all right what's this really about with him is it the fact that you told him no and he's mad that he can't do something or is he putting meaning behind this no and that means something else or it's always making me curious now. So instead of reacting, I'm always constantly just sitting and observing <laughs> with whatever's going on. So yeah, that's I would say that's the biggest way it's changed it. And it's also made me more open to him. Like I pay more attention to his interests and it wasn't always easy for us to communicate. Like I've been busy all weekend. It's just been back to back stuff. Like we went to an art class yesterday at the library, which was fun. We love doing art. 
that's his thing. And so I like to connect with him with art. Um, that I had um, a class I had to be in over the weekend. Um, I had a client I had to coach over the weekend. It was back to back stuff. So today he comes to me and he sees me getting ready to leave. And he's like, are we going to watch a movie today? And I already know what I got on my schedule for today. And I was like, oh. I said, well, I'm sorry. We haven't been able to watch one this weekend, but um, my schedule's going to be pretty busy this evening. I said, if I get back home in time enough before it gets too late, we can. But if it gets too late, um, how do you feel if we watch one another day this week? And he was like, well, okay. I mean, I wanted it to be while I didn't have school, but if it has to be later this week, it'll be okay. So I realized that a lot of his behavior is affected by my behavior. And if I'm aware of my behavior, it's going to make parenting go smoother. Whereas before I wasn't aware of my behavior as a parent. I just, you know, I'm the parent. This is how it goes. You know, oh, you're upset. You're upset. Well, I'm having a really bad day. You know, that's nothing for you to be upset about or, um, no, I cannot buy that for you. Money does not grow on trees. I mean, you just want to spend money left and right. You know, I have to pay bills as a parent, <laughs> you know, just in parent mode. And as parents, we want the best for our children. Mm. And we want to parent them the best way. But no, we don't have all the answers. <laughs> and as a parent before, no, I thought I had all the answers. Like, no, I'm the parent. <laughs> so this is the way it, it is. This is the way it needs to be. You know, and if I give you flexibility with it, you know, it's because I'm allowing you to have flexibility with it because I'm the parent. This is the way it is. Now, when you're grown, you go out there, you do what you ever, do, whatever you want to do. But in my house, my rules, my say, this is how it is. And of course, as with much, as with many children, no, there's going to always be pushback. Yeah. And I think as parents, we forget that we weren't always parents. Yeah. We forget how we felt when we were dealing with our day-to-day -day lives as a child, whether that's an elementary school, middle school, high school. Um, we forget what that felt like because now we're parents. Yeah. 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 Mm, I love that. I love that. I noticed, yeah, changes. You know, I came into the principal's conversation because of like severe anxiety and panic. And it's like, it's changed my whole life, you know? And I think... I just, yeah, I love that you're like talking about aware of your own behavior. And I just feel like I'm, my mind's quieter. I'm slowed down. Like I'm, you know, it doesn't yeah. say I'm not, don't get in my head, but I'm much more aware of, oh, I'm in my head. This doesn't have to do with my kids, you know, and settle down and reconnect. And, um, but also it's like, I love that you were talking about, you know, yeah, you couldn't watch a movie and but you, when we can communicate in a heartfelt way, it's okay. It doesn't have to be like, oh, we have to do everything perfectly or what they want. You know, um, my son loves to take a bath every night. He's nine when he's with me. And so we have this, he use all the bath products and we read our book. But last night we all stayed up later. Uh, we have like a big Sunday dinner, a family dinner, and we were playing games. And so it was like nine 50 and, and I'm tired at nine 50. Like I do not want to do a long bath time routine. You know, um, I'm like, we'll just brush the teeth. So he's like, no bath. But then he's like, Oh, can I wash my feet? And I'm like, of course, like wash your legs and your feet, you know, um, cause he plays outside. But it was like, I don't know. It's like when you're connected, it's okay if you can't watch the movie or take a bath. Like, and he, I'm like, tomorrow. And he's like, yeah, tomorrow. I don't know. It's just, um, I really loved that. And I know that you have a podcast too, your own talking. Would yes. you tell people that would like, like where they can find you, how they can listen to your podcast um, and then podcasting at where they can find you in general? Yes, absolutely. You can find me at... Um... Facebook, on Facebook, as Danielle Desiree. You can find me on Instagram at, at the Danielle Desiree. You can find me um, on YouTube. The name of my podcast is An Extraordinary Life. And An Extraordinary Life was inspired by my son, son, the youngest one I'm talking about. Um, he's on the autism spectrum. So um, while I was parenting him, there was, I didn't see 
and maybe there was, but I didn't see very many resources for me out there. Um, when he was young, YouTube was just getting started. And I didn't have, at the time, other moms that were going through something similar. Um, I was a single mom. It was very hard on me. I didn't know much about autism. Um, and I was frustrated because I was working all the time and I felt like I couldn't give my son the resources that he needed. So with where I am today, and especially with my son and all that I've learned, I know that one of the biggest things I wish I had was parents sharing their stories with each other. There were so many parents that I come into contact with and they would say, oh my gosh, your son's on the spectrum. My child's on the spectrum too. Like, what did you do when your son did this? Or did he do that? Or how, how are you, you know, dealing with this? And over time, I was like, why is there nothing out there that's showcasing our parenting stories? So um, every guest on Extraordinary Life is either a parent of a neurodiverse child, not just autism, ADD, ADHD, um, OCD, all of it, all of it that falls under the neurodiversity umbrella. So they're either a parent of a child with it or grandparent, legal guardian, um, or they're an adult who grew up with it. And once they've become adults, I want to interview them and say, well, what was it like for you? What was your story growing up? What do you wish you would have gotten that support? What did you get that helped you? Um, making that awareness out there. So I'm hoping that every episode, parents, and even the children, if they're old enough and they're listening, yeah. they'll feel themselves, they'll see themselves, um, they'll get value from it, learn different things from it. And um, and that's that's my dream. That's my hope. I love it. I, I think, well, you know, I, I was a school psychologist. And so I think people crave that connection, like just as parents in general, but especially parenting an extraordinary child and having those conversations. Um, I think it's so special and I'm so happy and I would love to be a guest. I know we were talking about that before we recorded. Um, but then maybe if people are listening, if they wanted to have a conversation, could they contact you on Facebook or Instagram? Absolutely. You can contact me on Facebook, Instagram. If you want to contact me by email. You can do that. Danielle.DanielleHogan at gmail.com. Um, I also coach as well. Um, just not 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 just the neurodiverse population or parents of neurodiverse children. Um, I'm coaching people right now that have dealt with trauma, um, anger issues, you know, other other things that us as humans deal with. So, if you're interested, we can always hop on a free call and talk about that as well. Oh, so, I love that. Yeah. Yes. Oh well, thank you so much, Danielle, for coming on and sharing your story of hope and being a friend and a colleague. And I just loved having this conversation with you. Oh, you're welcome. Anytime, Lily, you're one of my favorite people. So yeah. Oh, you're one of my favorite people. And Danielle and I got to meet in person. Oh, I should put our picture up maybe with this episode. Yes, yes, please. I know. Yes, we got to meet in person. I was able to go to California um, and it was just so beautiful to be able to be there in person with you. So I hope that it won't be forever until we're able to get together again. <laughs> I know. I hope so too. Well, I love you, Danielle. Thank you for coming on. All right. You're welcome. Love you too. Okay. I'll talk to you soon. <laughs> Bye. Bye-bye.